Praise the Lord. God bless you, saints. What a wonderful God we serve. What a wonderful day it is. Amen. I am grateful to get back with you on this study that we've been dealing with. Huh. Zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. But not according to knowledge. That's what they had. Paul is speaking on this in Romans about his Jewish brothers having a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. And we found out that knowledge was the righteousness of God. And so as believers, it is so vital, so important that we understand what this righteousness is that comes from God. Amen. Because as a minister, it, 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 it is, uh, as ministers, we uh, have to lead you through the knowledge of righteousness. We have to, we have to lead, it's, it's our duty to lead you, uh, to lead you through righteousness. Because to lead you any other way, we have missed the understanding, the good news of what has been promised to us in Christ Jesus. So it's very vital that we lead you through the knowledge of the righteousness of God that is in Christ Jesus. That is our mission as ministers. Amen. Can I get an amen somebody? Because really, in this life, in this life where we are seeing God's righteousness, it's allow us to see ourselves accepted. It allows us to see ourselves reconciled. It allows us to see ourselves redeemed, holy. Uh, 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 our sins are, are forgiven, totally forgiven. We're forgiven people. Saved, <laughs> spiritually filled with the life and sons and daughters in the sight of God. So through this righteousness, we can see ourselves the way God sees us. Anything else under the law, we saw ourselves what? Condemned. We saw ourselves under a curse. We saw ourselves uh, um, um, walking in a place of uh, fear, a place of death, a place of not being accepted. We didn't know where we were and where we were going, even though the law was not even given to us. We always felt like this cloud over our heads, wondering, am I saved or not? Has God accepted me or not? So there's, there's a contrast between law and grace, and we need to take a closer look at what God is saying. So with that being said, let's go back to our uh, foundation scripture here, where we took a look at Romans 10. And I'm going to read from Romans 10, verse uh, 3 and 4. What it says here is that, since they did not know, the righteousness that comes from God. So number one, there's a righteousness that comes from God. Praise you, Jesus. He said that comes from God and sought to establish their own. Listen, since they did not know the righteousness that comes from God and sought to establish their own, they did not submit to the righteousness of God. Wow. They did not submit to the righteousness of God. They went about to establish their own. And then also it says, Christ is the end of the law. So that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. Amen. Amen. I told you in our last setting, remember the last two or three settings, that when I got a hold of this, there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I believe. <laughs> what are you talking about? Because I know I believe, I received Jesus, I came to the, to the altar, uh, uh, I repeated what the minister told me to repeat, I said yes, I was baptized, uh, uh, I'm a candidate, right, righteousness, what righteousness that is apart from the law? What are you talking about? Because most of us see the righteousness of God based on our behavior and we're trying to behave right to be accepted. And I understand that, been there and done that. But this righteousness, God says, uh, it's a gift. It is a gift. And that gift is Jesus Christ. And that gift was displayed at the cross to the resurrection. That you and I can experience this righteousness. Because why? Because we believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But listen to this. Righteousness was demonstrated at the cross. So you and I can be made the righteousness of God through the resurrection. Are oh, you know what I'm saying? It was provided for at the cross, but received in his resurrected life. 
so me and you could be sons and daughters. This is what has been promised. We're going to get to this a little later. But I, I, I gotta, I'm getting ahead of myself, but this is what was promised to come. And we were included in the promise as Gentiles. We were included what God was doing through Christ that we too may come into the promise that was given to Abraham. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Okay, let's look at uh, another scripture here. Let's go to Romans, Romans 1 and 16. This is a familiar scripture. And uh, I like this scripture because it began to deal with my life as a believer and as a minister to understand something here. And I understand how Paul came to this in his own life and in his own understanding because it is through the knowledge, it is through the knowledge of Christ we begin to understand what God has accomplished, what he has already finished, what he has already set in order that you and me, that you and I can have a fellowship with him. This is familiar scripture, Romans 1 and 16. Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God unto salvation or for salvation, for the salvation of everyone who believes. He says, first to the Jews and then the Gentiles. He says, for, for in, in the gospel, one version says, for in it, it says, for in the gospel, he says, a righteousness from God is revealed. So he, he, let me read from the Amplified over here. He says, I'm not ashamed of, of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation from his wrath and punishment. It's a salvation from God's wrath and punishment to everyone who believes in Christ as Savior, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, both springing up from faith and leading to faith disclosed in a way that we that, that awakens more faith. So Paul says he's not ashamed of the gospel. The gospel is the power to save, but in it is the righteousness of God revealed. God's righteousness has been revealed in the gospel. That's why you hear me say, listen, my, my minister, that's why you hear me say, you cannot speak of the gospel without including righteousness. We can talk about Jesus' death, we can talk about his burial and we can talk about his resurrection as being the salvation that we have come to God. But you're doing a, 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 a great uh, harm uh, 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 if we do not introduce, speak up, bring up, bring out <laughs> the righteousness that Paul said has been revealed in the gospel. Because the gospel is a the gospel is, is, is a word of faith. The gospel is, 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 is a, a word of faith. Because in it, the righteousness of God that justifies us and makes us right in his sight. This is how me and you are right in the sight of God. Based on what he has done through Christ. Our sins were judged at the cross through the death of Christ. Apart from the gospel, God justified us by what? By sending his son to the cross, apart from the law. This is the issue that the Jews had. How is a man going to be justified apart from what God has given, has given to Moses? You know, Moses is, 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 you know, he's the man. God has given him charge of the law, and we are custodians of the law. The Jews are the custodians. But listen, listen. Jesus said to the Jews, uh, you're lifting up Moses. Moses is your accuser. The law has accused us. The law has allowed us to see that we were, what, sinners guilty before God. The law has silenced all of our mouths that no one can judge or say anything because we all were sinners under the law. And so, but this righteousness has come in and did what the law could not do. Amen. Glory to God. God has shown us that his righteousness has done what the law could never do. What? That is to justify us and makes us right in his sight. So as ministers, to leave out righteousness out of the gospel, we are speaking of a gospel that is not of the scriptures. Paul says it's not a gospel 
at all. It's not a gospel at all. If it doesn't justify, it's not a gospel at all. If it doesn't make us right with God, it's not a gospel at all. He says the just should live by faith. Oh, help me somebody. Let's go to uh, Romans 3 and 21. I won't be with you long. Romans 3 and 21. But he tells us the just should live by faith. This is not to live by faith. I'm living by faith, hoping and wishing and causing things to happen. What I speak on and what I speak at, causing, using my faith to move mountains and, and causing uh, 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 you know, things to stop, causing God to do this. What I speak and things happen. No, 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 no. That's not what we're talking about. <laughs> this faith here that we're talking about is the faith that God revealed to us at the cross to where that we find ourselves right with God because this faith has justified us and it is pleasing in his sight Romans 3 and 21 but now a righteousness from God apart from the law has been made known has that righteousness been made known to you because as a minister, it is very important that it's been made known to you. Listen, it has been made known to you to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ. This righteousness of God comes through faith. It comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believes. This is who this righteousness comes from. As we were saying, it's a gift. It's a gift. We didn't earn it. We didn't work for it. But it's a gift. And it comes through faith in Jesus Christ. Because in Christ, we have found a righteousness that God has purposed for us to have from the beginning. Now, knowing that we've been made righteous in the sight of God, and we are being led by the Spirit of God that leads us into all righteousness, a desire, the desire to live right, a desire to want to live right, a desire to be led by the Spirit, and being uh, and, and 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 doing what and being and doing what God would have us to do as righteous men and women of God, and allowing the Spirit. To, to what? To lead us into holiness and righteousness, understanding God's love for us. We are people of faith. When you're saying you're a person of faith, do you, you know what you're saying? Now, we're not saying we're a person of faith because we go to church. We're not saying we're a person of faith because we're in a certain denomination. We are people of faith because we've been justified. Yes, yes, yes. We are people of faith because we've been justified through faith in Jesus Christ. That at that cross, our sins were judged. God demonstrated his righteousness that you and I can share in the love of God. And we can share in this new nature, this life that is in Christ Jesus. See, what makes it hard to live for God, what makes it hard to be a Christian, some that are struggling saying that it's hard to be a Christian because they're looking at the things they have to stop doing. And when a minister is ministering things that what we have to stop doing, it's hard for those to what? To come. We're making it hard for them to receive because when we're uh, trying to cross every T and dot every I to, to those who want to come, Jesus said, let them come. Let them come. If they have listened and if they have heard the faith of this message, the gospel of Jesus Christ, who laid down his life and laying down his life, he has dealt with our sin once and for all, that we can come to him because God is no longer counting sins against us. He has reconciled us to himself that we can have a fellowship, a life in the beloved. Amen. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. So, in my closing, 
So we're not walking in a foolishness or with a zeal that is not according to the knowledge of God. But as ministers, as believers, we're walking in a knowledge according to the righteousness that is in Christ Jesus. And we are leading others according to that same righteousness. That you have been justified and made right in the sight of God. And righteousness is available to everyone who believes. Righteousness is a gift. Jesus is that gift. If you have received Christ, you need to learn. Get in the Bible. Get in the scriptures and let the Holy Spirit minister to you more on this righteousness. So you can see yourself accepted in his sight. So you can see yourself drawing nearer to God because God has drawn near to us. Amen. God bless you. We'll pick this back up again and we'll see what the Spirit of God is saying to us according to this knowledge. God, we give you thanks. We say thank you for your love towards us. In Jesus' name, God bless you, saints, and I'll see you next time.